Welcome to Why Wait, the real-time analytics podcast by Rockset. We invite business leaders, app development thought leaders, and analytics specialists to share their stories with the world, providing insights into what your peers are doing to improve application analytics in real time. Before I kick it off, if you're listening to this and have a question or would like to comment, please do so on our community chat, uh, Slack channel at rockset-community.slack.com. And you can also actually leave us a, a, a message on Twitter as well. You can tweet at us at Rockset Cloud. With me is my co-host, Druba Borkator, Rockset co-founder and CTO. Thank you for being here, Druba. It's always a pleasure and taking the time to chat with us. Today, Druba and I are joined by an engineering leader with quite a track record. Um, having started at Yahoo, he rose through the ranks and moved on to Facebook as a senior engineering manager, holding that role for over six years. He then moved on to Dropbox and most recently to Uber, where he's owned data infrastructure and now engineering. I've really been looking forward to this conversation. Welcome to the Why Wait podcast, Zhang Xiao. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, and, and let's jump right into it. Um, I, and I know Druba and Zhang know each other from a previous life, uh, previous life. How do you gentlemen know each other? Yeah, I have known Zhang for a long time. Uh, I think the first time I met him is when I was working at Yahoo, like more than a decade back, and I was working on the Hadoop project. And Jeng was actually in a team at Yahoo who was kind of the first users of the Hadoop project. So I have known him for a long time, starting when big data revolution started. And I also worked with him at Facebook where Jeng built a lot of real-time infrastructure at Facebook, including Puma and Calligraphus and some other projects at Facebook. This is how real-time analytics kind of started when both of us were peers at, at, at Facebook. Um, Jeng, welcome. Thanks a lot for being here. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Juba. Uh, yes. Uh, so, yeah, as uh, Juba already mentioned, uh, so Juba and I worked together for a pretty long time. Uh, I started my career about uh, 15, 20 years ago when I was uh, doing research on data mining and databases in a University of Illinois. What I realized at that time is without a good infrastructure, there's no way to do data mining on machine learning or AI, right? which is pretty much what I think the industry right now is kind of um, uh, looking at as well. Right? So then afterwards I started working at Yahoo and that's when I got to know Juba and I worked with Juba very closely for the six years I had at uh, Facebook, then switched to Dropbox. And then um, five years ago, I joined Uber and had been at Uber for uh, working on this um, uh, big data systems for the last five years. Yeah, you have uh, a lot of experience working on different systems in some of these cutting edge companies, mm -hmm. right? But let's talk, let's start off where, um, about life at Facebook where both of us were working together. Uh, we had, you had designed a lot of real-time analytic solutions there at Facebook. Could you explain a little bit about the pain points of some of the real-time analytic systems that we implemented at Facebook? And what were the challenges as far as the usage of those systems were concerned? Yeah, sure. I guess the first of all, maybe I should introduce a little bit about the need of the real-time analytical systems at Facebook. Right? So in general is um, each of the companies, right? so including the other companies I work at, right? so when they first get started, they are okay with some analytics results that are kind of late or let's say still. But as the business continue to grow, the need of getting the real-time analytics is stronger and stronger. Right? So business users want to get the numbers as soon as possible so they can make decisions. And they started from the daily reports eventually to minute and eventually to what they want to look at uh, in real time so that they don't need to bother engineering team to prepare the reports for them. And uh, uh, the, for the real-time analytics, when we first get started, right? so those um, use cases are still very simple. It's basically simple counting based on some dimensions. But then quickly, the capability becomes the biggest pain point that our customer needs. That means people start to look for full SQL support. People start to look for nested columns. Uh, so people start to look at how we can handle late arriving data, as that includes exactly one's delivery and the semantics. That also includes data processing. When 
sometimes an old record comes in and new record update the value, right? So then how can we make sure the total sum is still correct by subtracting or uh, by adding the data between the two records? And so all these kind of um, capabilities becomes the, the pain point, right? By the way, those capabilities, a lot of them are already in the traditional batch systems, but because the real-time system new, it takes a lot of effort to build those things from scratch and add into the real-time systems, right? So that's the first uh, side on the uh, first challenge on the developer uh, kind of uh, the developing capability side. The next challenge is on the maintainability and SA batch systems. We have one day to finish the job. If the system goes down, engineers got time to restart the systems. For real-time systems, unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. So once the system is down, we, lay, uh, we, we basically violate our SA. The third challenge that we have is related to cost. Because the real-time analytics requires a lot of the processing memory, right? so we require a much bigger systems um, that consume a lot of memory and CPU in order to provide statistics. All of them add up is, I would say, real-time analytics is not easy. Yeah, real-time analytics is definitely a challenge, especially when a lot of enterprises are trying to use it. I mean, um, but is it possible that some of these challenges could be addressed if you build a solution uh, that is kind of customized for real-time analytics? So you said about the batch analytic, batch solutions that are used to have, but now if you build a real-time analytic system just by itself, what will be the engineering trade-offs or what will be the trade-offs in building such a solution compared to the batch systems that you had before? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think that's also most of the companies how they started with the real-time addicts. Right? So basically keep the batch system away. And now uh, the batch systems, they have been optimized for big jobs for scale. And as a result, they config the system to handle big files, big blocks. And those systems unfortunately are not good at handling small files uh, just by choice. Right? So then when we come to the real-time systems where the, the, um, the data needs to be processed uh, very quickly, we would have to have a lot smaller data elements in the system design. And the result, it just makes sense for us to split it out into a complete separate system. And that's basically how Facebook has started and the open source community also started in that way. Right? So all the system that targeting for real-time analytics was different. For example, like uh, Facebook had a Scribe and then open source later had a Kafka and then also Samza to Flink. Right? So Facebook also had the streaming processing engines and those are all specialized for real-time data processing. Um, however, right, so this also creates additional complexity. Right? So now we have a batch system, we have a real-time system. How do we put those two systems together and make sense of them? And how do we reduce the overall um, operational overhead for both systems together? Those are, the, I would say, the next challenges that we will have once we have the two systems both in production. Yeah, batch systems typically probably, like you said, did things in big batches and big blocks or big files. So it was a different architecture there. For real-time analytics, because data is coming in and the, we need to make decisions in real time on the data that's coming in. Uh, what is What are your thoughts about saying, doing kind of uh, right time aggregations or pre-cubing essentially? So when the data is coming into the system, is it possible for the real-time analytics system to just do some aggregations even when data is coming in or create some cubes, maybe minor, smaller size cubes, so that at a time of query, at least you can find these things quickly and easily? What are your thoughts in this area? Yeah, this question is actually very close to my heart since uh, cubing was uh, one of the main topics for my research back in graduate school. So at that time I thought, hey, cube can solve a lot of problems. But when we get into economy, what happens is cubing can only solve, I would say maybe 10 or 15% of the problem. The reason because um, first of all, right, so if we know exactly the query, we can do cubing. But in reality is that the number of dimensions in a business setting is usually huge. Pre-cubing for a high dimension is not possible at all, right? So, and then if we lift our thinking uh, one step higher, cubing is just one of the very special technique for query optimization. And cubing is a subset of the materialized views that database engines provide. The big question will be, uh, so can we hide these cubings and all the optimizations from the user perspective, so the user wouldn't have to worry about this. They still write SQL or whatever 
language that allows them to express the business logic as simple as possible, then the backend system will figure out what are the cubes need to build, what are the indexes need to be built, and then make the query run fast and efficiently. Right? So I think that's a very good challenge. And I think the whole industry is still like uh, exploring um, how to do this really well. Right? So I think we are in a very early stage right now. Yeah, I think I like your, uh, your focus saying that how can you make life easy for the user because then they don't have to do this as a separate, separately, it is part of the system that they're using, right, to make life easy for the user. Uh, another idea that, uh, that an analytic system like Rockset uses are things like um, where uh, as part of a, when a query comes in and as part of the query planning, you can, we can potentially figure out, let's do, or oh, maybe um, a broadcast join, right? But as part of executing that query, the system can automatically determine that maybe this is not the, not the right type of join to be done. Maybe I can switch the join algorithm and do a different kind of join based on the data set. Again, to make life easy for the user. So the user doesn't have to do it explicitly. Um, have you seen systems who do this in general? What are your thoughts about kind of system which can do these kind of uh, execution optimization or query planning optimizer optimizations in hand in hand with the execution of the analytical query? Yeah, that's also a very good question. Right? So I'm actually looking for such a system because it, I think it will be so, so useful for especially, let's say, streaming analytics, which is part of the real-time analytics domain. Uh, the challenge there is because, so for traditional batch queries, they restart every hour or restart every day, right? So the query automator got to the opportunity to come in, look at the statistics and replan the query every single time the query runs. However, for the streaming analytics, the query is already running, right? So that means the optimizer only got one chance to optimize the execution plan before the query gets started. But while the query is running, there's no way to change the query plan anymore. So this is how the traditional architecture of the streaming analytics is designed. I think that architecture needs to be improved. And we can take some ideas from the just-in-time compiler, where from just like the Java language, right? so they will take the runtime instrumentations, runtime profiles of the program, and find out which are the code paths that got executed more frequently than the others then optimize that. And similarly here, I think we will need a just-in-time compiler, which runs together with the streaming job, take the profile from the job and decide when to switch from, from um, let's say, start based, uh, start merge based join to a hash join. That would be really awesome, but I haven't seen such a system in the industry or in the open source community yet. So when it comes to um, real-time analytics then, Jang, can, can we use a time series database instead? Is that, is that, are we able to do that? Is that an option? Yeah, time series database is also a very interesting topic, right? So uh, my understanding looks like this, right? So why time series database is so popular? Right? Because two reasons, first of all, there are definitely enough use cases for that in the industry. Right? So starting from system monitoring in the old days to now people call it APM, application purpose monitoring, especially because of the microservice architecture, but also to the uh, profile of the, the uh, product analytics and the mobile analytics, where they also have the uh, rich data set with the time dimension. So the use case is definitely abundant there. At the same time, there's also enough opportun uh, opportunities for optimization. Time series database, they can utilize those techniques like uh, data encoding and the uh, compression to compress the data to a lot smaller than before, right? And that's a special capability of the time series data sets. So that's why time series database is uh, very popular, right? However, time series database is also very limited. Right? So they do not support the full SQL. So a lot of times when people want to join the data set from the time series database with something else, it takes a lot of uh, effort. Right? So they need to build the connectors. They need to add a layer of SQL engine on top of that in order to make that work. So as a result, time series database, in my opinion, cannot solve the real-time analytics problem in general. What I would be looking for is, at some point, maybe the real-time analytics systems can be generalized enough, and they can take the ideas from the time series database and put those ideas into the real-time analytics engine so that that real-time analytic engine can 
handle time series data set as efficiently as a time series database. Yeah, but again, yeah, so I think this is uh, probably some some areas that maybe some startup are working on, but I haven't seen a very promising um, product yet for our use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then operationally, could you, well, could you mind elaborating on some of the um, operational aspects of, of real-time analytics? Like, do you need a lot of engineers to run a system like this? Or like, how would you even find you know, a staff with such operational, or that has the ability to handle operational complexity? Yeah, that's also a very good question, right? So um, this is a real challenge in the industry, in my opinion, right? So uh, for my own experience, right? So I was lucky to be in some of the highly technical um, companies in the Silicon Valley where we mm -hmm. are lucky to have such a talented team where we work on both the software development and operation side of things. Mm -hmm. When the engineers knows the code, it becomes, of course, much easier to operate. However, at the same time, the real-time analytics systems are relatively new. They are much more immature compared with traditional databases. For databases, it's easy to hire DBA to run, right? But for real-time analytics, since there are so many different systems, so many different technologies, and technology themselves are changing so fast, right? So let's say from Scribe to Kafka, from uh, Druid to Pinoy, and also from Samza to Flink. It's actually going to be a very big challenge to staff an in-house team who can operate this set setup of a setup of a real time analytics efficiently. Um, so frankly, I don't have answer to your question. So if there's a way that we can get help, uh, get some help for the companies in the world who are not as technical but also want to leverage the benefit of analytic systems, I think that would be great. And maybe this is uh, one of the things that uh, Rockset as a company is looking for. And so, um, so I think that may be very useful for the industry. Well, I think, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the quote of the, of the time together uh, was, quote, real-time analytics is not easy um, by, by Zhang, right? So um, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet that after this. I, I love that. That's great. Um, I, I, <clears throat> I, I think that's all the questions that we have um, from our side. I think I wanted to keep it short and sweet and helpful. And I think we did that uh, for our listeners. If you found this insightful, please share it. Um, like I said, we'd love to hear your thoughts. So comment if you uh, and ask questions uh, in our Slack channel uh, or via Twitter. Um, this uh, Why Wait broadcast is, is brought to you by Rockset. We at Rockset are building a real-time analytics cloud-based platform uh, that can add value to the uh, situations uh, that are similar to what we discussed today. So check us out at rockset.com. Uh, we have a two-week free trial where you can receive a $300 uh, trial credit um, when you're checking us out and uh, you know play with it, break it, do what you can, do what you can uh, build on it. Uh, we'd love to uh, we'd love to have you. So please subscribe, comment. Um, thank you once again for joining. Uh, thank you, Zhang. Thank you, uh, Druba, for your time. Uh, and stay tuned for our next episode. Cheers, everyone. Have a great night.